So I hope I am um, audible enough on your side. And uh, um, uh, first of all, a very good morning. Um, uh, welcome on board uh, the uh, the session on uh, an, a new solution, which is talking about a paradigm, a new paradigm in the server lifecycle management. Um, on behalf of Vivit, this is Naveen Chabra welcoming you on board this session today. Um, uh, we will uh, we will quickly take you uh, through uh, the new solution which is called as server automation virtual appliance uh, uh, which is which is bringing out a new whole uh, you know methodology in managing the server lifecycle management So this session, as I said earlier, is brought to you by uh, the Vivit uh, leadership team, and uh, you know I represent the Vivit uh, uh, as a Vivit chapter leader, uh, New Delhi. Um, I am hosting this session um, uh, for you all, uh, and I I hope the session is informative and knowledgeable enough for you to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, take this further in your day-to-day -day job, and uh, uh, I look forward to a, a informative session to be presented by Manish Baluja uh, this morning. Manish is uh, uh, director for HP Software Cloud and Automation Portfolio. Uh, he manages uh, uh, the HP Software Cloud and Automation business for uh, Asia Pacific and Japan. For you all to know, uh, uh, this session is being recorded, and the recordings would be available, you know, post this session as well uh, for you to hear through those if in case required. Uh, you know, while you have an opportunity to hear and uh, you know understand uh, what the solution is all about, uh, I'm sure there would be uh, some striking questions during the presentation. Uh, we welcome you to, we encourage you to put your questions on the question manager, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of on the right side in the, uh, in the webinar management screen. And you could put your questions there. Uh, we, would, we would try to answer your questions appropriate at, at an appropriate stage. Or during the end, we would have a Q&A &A session uh, to answer your questions. So this is how the webinar control panel looks like. As I said, you would have an option to put your questions out there, uh, which could be either responded back on uh, on, on the same screen, or as uh, we would we would also have an opportunity to have a quick Q and A discussion Q and A session towards the end of the session. So with that, uh, uh, let me so pass that, on this to Manish. A little apology here. You know, we are uh, we are finding some technical glitch. Apology for that. Uh, with this, I would pass on uh, you know the stage to Manish Baluja uh, for him to start uh, the presentation uh, on on this. Uh, a brand new solution called HP Server Automation Standard, uh, a, a short name to you know the otherwise known solution called Server Automation Virtual Appliance. So you may find that you know these are uh, one and the same name. Uh, it is present to, to to the customers in a virtual appliance form. So this is also at times referred to as Server Automation Virtual Appliance. Hey, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Manish Baluja and I am part of HP Software, Asia Pacific and Japan. Uh, I'm based out of New Delhi and I've been uh, managing cloud and automation portfolio 
for uh, HP software for last six to seven years. And today I have the opportunity to share with you uh, some of the details about a new solution that we have rolled out, uh, uh, you know, known by the name SAVA, which is uh, short for Server Automation Virtual Appliance, or its more official name like Server Automation Standard Edition. So as Naveen mentioned, both are the same products, and just just the names differ, uh, you know, uh, by the way we pick up. So today we're going to cover uh, the some of the key features for server automation, and let's see uh, if we can, you know, learn and and try and make this more, uh, you know, useful for for your data centers. Okay. Great. <clears throat> So uh, today, if you uh, look at uh, the key IT trends prevalent in the market or in the in the IT organizations today, you would see an emergence of new style of IT. Why a new style of IT? Because there are different technologies that are impacting the IT today, and uh, and the, the organizations of the future would compete in the context of these innovations around cloud, mobility, social media, and of course, the big data. They would definitely strive to find new uses of cloud. They would work towards getting a better experience for the mobile users. They will try and get more insight using the social media of how the consumer behavior is, what do they want, the young, the old, the kids. And obviously to do that, they would use the, the big data tools to, to mine that information. And all this would be done to ensure that they have a better business, to enhance the business interest, and to retain the brand loyalty to their business. So although all these four technologies present the opportunity for business to enhance their, 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 their dollar numbers to enhance their business, but at the same time, the opportunities are being challenged by some of the uh, you know, IT uh, challenges that, that are prevalent today. Some of this you can already see on your screens. Slower IT response. So there's one word that would, I would want you to remember is that today the IT is supposed to work, operate at the speed of business. There is no other way to define the speed of business, uh, or the speed of IT in response to business requirement. That's one. The other challenge is that because you have you know, different delivery models in the cloud, right from uh, you know private cloud to the public cloud, and of course, you would still continue to have the legacy IT with you. But what would that result into is you know some kind of a loss of control because now the business can actually use the the, the credit card and and buy a lot of infrastructure on the cloud. And that is resulting in something called shadow IT, right? That's where uh, IT has got more responsibility to ensure the controls and the governors, right? And the third most important part is, uh, which is obviously uh, the cost. The enterprise IT is under continuous pressure to, re you know, cut down on the cost and still deliver on the business ask and minimize the risk. So. Now you understand. Now, now we are familiarized with what are the technology trends that are happening, and what are the uh, what are the challenges for each of these opportunities. And today we would focus uh, on uh, some of the uh, you know some of these challenges 
and see how server automation could possibly address them. So uh, let's further drill down on some of the challenges in the next slide here. Okay. So if you look at the server domain, what are the challenges that we as a you know IT administrators or the director of ops or the data center managers see? The number of servers to be managed for various business applications has tremendously increased. Why? How? Because of the virtualization. We, adopt, we adopted the virtualization as a boon, you know, but what happened was virtualization sprawl happened. Everybody could get a, a new server with a click of a mouse, right? And that's how the number of servers got increased. Not only that, business application got a lot more modular and agility introduced, so you need more server more often. That's one part. And because you have so many servers, the, the, the valuable time of a server administrator is being spent to manage those environments. And sometimes, you know, those tasks, those actions that are piled up are very mundane, you know, just to check a server health, you know, at a nine o'clock, take some configuration backup or something, you know, which ideally could have been done by a, a tool or, or a solution, right? The other, the next challenge that we see is the, you know, the, the the part about governance and the risk management, right? When you have so many, uh, you know, uh, servers coming up on a hourly or a day-to-day -day basis, and then some of them disappearing, it's very important. You know, it's it's very difficult for 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 an administrator to enforce the the the, the compliance on, onto those server environment. The other uh, the the last challenge that we see is is coming out of the heterogeneity that we maintain in our data centers. We have different operating systems, we have different um, virtualization technologies, we are using hardware from different companies, we have different storages. All that results in you know point tools and point tools for Solaris, well, a point tool for Unix probably and, and point tool for for uh, Windows. So with that you know, it becomes difficult to manage the server environment, right? You know, you, you need to have different skill set to run the different environments. So having known these challenges, let's move forward to, to understand how these challenges could possibly be addressed. So I, I am I'm pretty glad to share with you uh, the server automation, introduce you to the server automation. It's today, it's, it's industry's leading server lifecycle management solution. All right, and, and I will share how, how uh, server automation standard edition can really, uh, you know, help you to overcome those challenges we just shared with you. So key highlights, the key highlights of server automation is the speed, the simplicity the cost and obviously the inheritance capabilities of server automation enterprise edition that it brings up. So why did we and how did we, uh, you know, rolled out this server automation? We had a, obviously a great feedback from customers like you who, who, who told us that, you know, we need something very simple, short and easy and also, you know, uh, easy on our pockets. So we went back to the drawing board. We innovated the solution where we maintained all the features of an enterprise edition, almost all the features. And plus, we made it very simple to deploy, very simple to maintain, and very light on the pocket. Right? So let's look at the key, key highlights. It's a self-contained virtual appliance. It's kind of a plug and play. You get a you know, a, a, a complete box for you to just install in few steps. And, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's very suitable for, for line of business and, and, and the mid-size deployments 
up to about 3,000 servers that it can manage. And the best part is, in case your environment grows beyond this, you know, 3,000 odd environment, you can always upgrade to the enterprise edition, and then you can scale up to 100,000 or more servers in a single deployment. Again, allow me to highlight that it continues to do the basic features like provision, configuration, patch, uh, patch and maintenance, and audit and compliance, all those features that we would cover in the next few slides. But this is a smart tool, comes in a very small package, easy to deploy. So let's see. <coughs> so I shared with you that <coughs> it's, it's going to be uh, uh, a, a solution that can be deployed very fast, right? So it takes about 20 odd minutes to set up the basic server automation virtual appliance. You need to load a VM image, power on the VM, and then run the first time setups on the appliance. And it's, trust me, it's all guided. You don't have to really have the major learning curve to just install the, the virtual appliance. That's just about 20 minutes. It's not counting. It's 20. And the next step, set up the users, create users and you know, uh, define their permissions based on their role and the personas. Uh, the access can be defined. Deploy the agents, agents onto the server environment that you want to manage. Right? That can be done as quickly as within those 30 minutes that are highlighted on the left hand side corner. Collect inventory, you need to know what's already there in your system. Right, so it's it's like a new uh, class teacher walking into a, a a class, and he wants to know the name of each of the students. That's that's like collect, collecting the inventory of all the servers in the data center. So all these three things are done within the thirty minutes. It's that sharp and sweet. Next step. Next step is very important and probably the HP software is the only vendor that stand out in terms of content. My favorite term has been that content is the king and if content is the king, trust me, HP holds the crown on its forehead. We have one of the best content in the industry to help <coughs> the administrators like you to, to manage the server environment, right? So what, what all you can do? You can set up a patch import from, from all the vendors like Microsoft or, 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 the, or the Linux vendors. Set up security and compliance content, right? So in, in order for you to keep the uh, server environment compliant, you need to know what are the best practices of the industry. So that's where we come in and we help you out. And we also help you to attach those policies to the various server groups that you maintain within the, the complete server environment that you have. So that spends about 90 minutes. So if you clock it by an hour, it's close to two, two to one and a half hours, and there goes the whole thing. Compare with any other tool, or even, let me be honest, if it, if, even with our earlier avatar of server automation, it, it, it used to take much, much longer. But today, you can get it done within two to two and a half hours. And the next thing is, uh, you know, spend about 10 minutes to schedule the jobs. What do you want to done? Those mundane tasks that you we were mentioning about, and that's it. Just spend 10 minutes a day, and you can really manage your server environment. Okay. So next slide is interesting. That's my my. Uh, let me say this is. I just created this 10 to 10, uh, you know, for us to remember the, 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 the key points of this solution. So here is this, 10 steps to value, all those two, two, two and a half hours, it just, just about 10 odd steps, 10 steps to value, two hours to get started, and 10 minutes a day to manage the server domain. So how easy it is, just spend about two hours, it's about 10 steps, all guided, and then you, you spend here on 10 minutes a day to be having a healthy server environment running for you, supporting the business applications. 
Okay. So what, what does it mean to you? It, it, the, the entire effort is to simplify, make your life easy. So as you know, I'm part of the cloud and automation uh, portfolio. So one of the key messages that we drive home to, to the data center owners is that we give you some time back to your life. We are doing an automation, right? And we are doing, and currently we are discussing the automation in the server domain. So, so suppose you spend about two hours managing the server environment. Probably one hour is right in the morning from 7:30 to 8:30, and the next hour happens about 7:30 in the night or the evening to 8:30 in the evening. Probably these are the two most important hours that you would want to spend with your life, or with your, and with your family. And that's what we intend giving back to you. And let's see some of the features that can really help you. Let's dig down on the features that can help you save some of the most important time, and also ensure that your server environment is all available as healthy as possible. Okay. The first classification of the feature capability. The provision of your server. Your server takes the birth. I use the word birth because that, that, that's so easy for me to relate to, you know, uh, bring the server into our life. So with server automation, the standard edition, you can build, uh, you know, build the OS plans for you. You can have multiple OS build plans, you know, few for Windows and few for Linux, and you can just use those build plans to create, to provision your server's environment, server environment. And one of the most important part is you can further, you can move up the value chain and, and deploy other softwares in the sequence that you want. You can decide the sequence that immediately after the operating system, the, the, the server, uh, uh, sorry, the, 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 word, the virus scanner needs to be installed. And then the Microsoft utilities needs to be installed. All this is, you know, in the in the form of uh, a sequence, and that you can really uh, deploy your packages accordingly. The the, uh, the the other important point is about the fact that you can create templates, and those templates, whatever you know, property that they have, whatever the policy that they have, can be transmitted to the servers that come into existence using the template. So if there's a one golden configuration of a template and there are maybe 200 servers, you don't have to worry about 200 servers. This is just one template that will ensure that all the uh, all that you need in those 200 servers is there in that golden template and that's the part of the existence of those 200 servers. And while you provision and configure those servers, thousands of them, you can obviously audit them for all the policies that you attach to those servers. Okay. So, so we have certain customer uh, successes, and one of them is uh, is listed here. Uh, you know, it refers to one of our customer who used to spend a lot of time in managing the and building the servers. Uh, by using server automation, they could possibly reduce about 70% of their time that was being invested before adopting the server automation. Patch and maintenance. So once you have configured your server, the next step in terms of operations, day-to-day -day operations, and managing the server environment covers the patch and maintenance, the regular maintenance. So with server automation, standard edition, the SAVA, you can, you can patch as many as servers, as many as many times that you want. You may want one uh, you know, group of servers to be patched at SP level 1 and the other group at SP level 2. All this can be managed through the template. 
right? And, and the best part is you can track the, the, the patch, you can validate and update the configuration last state of existence for all those servers that you are trying to manage. The other important part is that, uh, you know, uh, by, by use of server automation, you can actually infuse the standardization of the processes, processes of uh, provisioning, and also the processes of patching. So if you go and adopt certain standards, there is a very uh, minimal chance of you going wrong and thereby introducing any risk to the system there. What you can also do is you can collect the information or induce certain actions uh, like you know adding a software, removing a software uh, from the existing configuration of certain uh, server groups. Okay. Uh, you can also do, um, I, I, I just would want to mention here, something called configuration drift. So in case you would want to know what changed in my server configuration from the standard that I deployed for, this system can help you to let you know, hey, Mr. Administrator, this is what changed in my last, uh, you know, uh, this is what changed since the standard configuration that I deployed for this particular server. This is very important, you know. This is important uh, because you need to audit, you need to maintain the compliance, and, you know, you should know what went wrong. And the most important part is who did that, So, which is why the audit is important, right? So what this is one of the points that I missed on the last slide, so I, I bring up the last slide once again. So remember, with server automation standard edition, you can trace each and every step task done on that particular one server or the group of server or the entire server farm that you may have. So you can audit, you can ensure the compliance, and if by some chance there is a breach of policy, a breach of compliance, you have all the power to make a decision how to remediate that. You have got all the power to remediate it immediately because you know who did wrong and what went wrong at all the time, at all the time. Okay. The next, the next uh, feature or the capability that I would want to share with you in terms of uh, these, uh, this solution server automation virtual appliance or standard edition is our ability to deploy software up, updates and the policy using the policies <clears throat> so while you uh, you know provision a server as i mentioned you can explicitly control which block of the sequence comes first and which block comes at the last <clears throat> and the important point to remember is you can all any time change that particular block out of the sequence and replace it with the another. That is the simplicity with which you can really manage your platform. So, and, and, and the other part is that, uh, you know, you can also do the same thing, not only by, by adding a software or an application or a utility to the server, but you can also change and deploy or introduce a new policy to a particular set of servers. So for example, there's a new guidelines, whether it could be a business enterprise guidelines that was introduced or was it, it could be a regulatory compliance or a policy that being introduced from a new financial year. So you got the ability to change or add that policy into the template and that would reflect the change into the server group because then you would use that template to 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 for, for that change to happen in the uh, the associated server groups to that particular template right and that's how you you also uh, you know you you create a, a reusable platform for yourself right you once you start using it 
you don't have to really uh, you know you don't have to re redo a lot of things once you have a, a standardization then you have the templates with you you just need to upgrade those policies and or add few softwares or utilities to that particular server group that you that you're managing so it's that easy I think I went a little, give me a minute, I'm sorry. Okay. So the other and the most important part of our lives has been if something goes wrong and you don't know what went wrong. That is one situation that none of us would want to be. And that's where server automation, standard edition or SAWA can really help you. We can help you with the best practices of industries like PCI, Serban Oxley, HIPAA, Bessel II for banks, FISMA, and a lot of other regulatory compliance that we can help you to adopt the, the, the policies from. You can, you can pick and choose from the library of these uh, you know, compliance reports or the policies to be deployed in your environment. And not only that, you can build some of these, uh, some of the policies on your own based on your enterprise guidelines, right? So, supposedly, I'm just giving you a very, you know, basic example that there is an application, business application that you are running. Maybe it's a business application hosted on the web, uh, deployed on the web, and and that particular application needs uh, Windows uh, SP2 patch number two, right? So that could be becoming a part of your, the policy that you deploy for those server farm or server group for that particular application that is hosting that particular application. So these kind of a policies can be created. You, you, can, you can take a queue from the library that we provide to you. It, it would have a library for PCI compliance. It would have a library for SOX compliance. It would have a Basel II, CISMA, and a lot of others. So you can pick up, pick and choose those best practices for yourself. right? And you, you can run the audit or a compliance report against each of the policies, against each of the server group, whichever way you want to do it. You know, you can run check policy compliance for this policy. So what will it do is it will get to know how many servers are being deployed using this policy framework and it will run a check on those 200 or 500 or 2000 servers and give you a report that out of those 2000 servers out of those 2000 servers probably 50 servers are out of compliance and then the next logical step from your side would be let me audit what happened on those 50 servers and you would get to know that probably one of the engineers you know violated you know while it was trying to do a patch management or some action violated or breached this particular uh, policy and then you would also know what you need to undo or remediate the, partic the particular change that breached the policy. So all the information are available at the click of a mouse on a single GUI that you see uh, or use for uh, server automation standard edition. It's that simple. Four steps and you have entire server farm complied to all the policies that you put in place when it was coming into existence as a server. Great, very simple. And, and just to cite an example, there is a customer in Europe which used to kind of take about 32 weeks to do a compliance audit and now it can do it in two days because they adopted something called server automation. And the next important part that I specifically wanted to cover today was about virtualization. You know, what can we do in the virtual world? Although we don't differentiate uh, between the physical and the virtual world, we support almost all technologies there. But, but because of virtualization, there are a lot of uh, you know issues or the challenges that are propped up. We we have a free way. I would say a freeway for, for virtual machines to be created. 
right, which is called virtual sprawl. People are creating virtual machines at the click of a mouse and then they forget that they, 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 these needs to be shut down and, and we have a sprawl here. <coughs> Sorry. So what we can help you with is that we can help you to build those templates, those golden configurations, right, with which you can control how those virtual machines are created, what can be done on them, what cannot be done on them. And each time a virtual machine is created using that, word, that, that particular golden template, they are created, built, maintained consistently based on that policy. So again, I would want to highlight no room for errors. So that's where we help you. And the, the other important point is that we can do it right at the time of day coming, you know, day means servers, OS instances, the virtual machines coming into existence. So right at the time of the birth, I attach the policies to that template, which is giving birth to the virtual machines. So they come into existence knowing their perimeter under which they have to live and being maintained. The important point here is the last point that I would want to highlight is that SA, user automation, virtual appliance can really help you to eliminate the outdated templates. And what does it help in turn? It helps you to maintain the virtual sprawl. If you know that this template is outdated, then possibly you also know that servers or OS instance related to this particular template are also outdated. Either they need to be uh, re, you know, refurbished or they need to be shut down. So that way you have a control on what's happening in your virtual environment. Right? So this is the power of a virtual appliance. So easy to use. Trust me, when I say 10 minutes a day, it's actually a 10 minutes a day that you should spend using server automation rather than probably two hours and that too in the odd hours of the day. That's where we give back the time to you and your family. And it's, 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 it's very cheap, uh, you know, light on the pocket because we have uh, uh, server automation virtual appliance just need a, a doesn't need the the expensive Oracle database, and 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 you know, it, you you just get the uh, packaged uh, database with the uh, with this uh, solution. So summary, it's a solution with a very low cost of ownership, both in terms of dollars and time. It's very simple to deploy. It, it has a unified interface for both physical and virtual management. It can have help you to, uh, you know, keep your compliance in the server farm. And it, it needs a very low maintenance cost, you know, both, again, both in terms of time and, and, and money. And uh, let me just give you one hint that the cost of standard edition of Sava is just about half of what the enterprise edition may cost you. So that's the beauty of this product. This is the power of this product. And, and let me uh, request you to go to uh, this particular link, download this trial version. I think this trial version is for 30 days and extendable to 90 days. You can download it. And, and in case you have any trouble using it, you know, in terms of what are capabilities that you can use, whether it's compliance or patching or maintenance, you can just call any of us, you know, our HP software, and, and, and we can help you to reach out to some of our pre-sales guys. They can help you to install or make better use of this tool for you for next 30 or 90 days that you wish to deploy in your labs or your test environments. Okay, so this, uh, I hand it over to uh, back to to Naveen. Yeah, I, I think Naveen can take it from here. And in case 
uh, I would request you to come up. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions that you may have. Uh, I think we have we have some time with us. We have plenty of time with us. So you can please be honest. If you have any question, please ask me. I'm there to answer it for you. Uh, hi, Manish. I think uh, uh, a very quick summary uh, as you've shared on uh, the product capabilities, uh, the deliverables, what uh, server automation has uh, for for people who are managing their data centers and uh, uh, find it troublesome uh, managing it with uh, uh, either no tools or with uh, you know multiple different point tools. Uh, yeah, the, the the challenges does you know the challenges do get get, get compounded uh, by that by those facts and uh, I believe uh, you know uh, people out there on the on this uh, webinar uh, have gotten some hints and understood how potentially server automation could help uh, them in their respective uh, management domains. Uh, I, I, I think uh, you know we would take few hints uh, and questions from the people you know who have either posted it online or otherwise uh, uh, you know I, I also get some understanding from the way you have presented and the data which I've collected uh, so Manish a couple of questions to you you know starting with the questions which are posted on the on the webinar so I think uh, one of the uh, uh, audience member has probably already used server automation uh, the earlier versions and the question it, it, it says is earlier it used to take a uh, few days just to get server automation installed uh, since uh, you know we have we have shared that it's a virtual appliance uh, the, the the audience member is understanding that it since it's a virtual appliance it would come up quite fast right it would be uh, it would take very less time as as it would have taken otherwise uh, uh, what are your thoughts Manish on that All right good question so this is this is the USB with which we have introduced the Sama to the industry so the key point was as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation the idea was to deliver a solution to the market which is uh, quick, fast, a rapid deployment, and which is easy to maintain and manage. And it's again, third point, it's lighter on the bucket also. So in terms of fast deployment, uh, as I mentioned, it just takes about two and a half hours to do the deployment. And obviously, depending on the scale uh, of the deployment, it, you know, in terms of configuration and integration with the other tools of the data center, it should take another, uh, you know, few hours to, to uh, about a, a day or two. Okay, uh, thanks, Manish. I hope uh, this question gets answered, uh, uh, you know, to the level required. And let me quick move over to the next question in line. It is. Uh, how reliable are these times or you know while you've shared that it could either take 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes or 90 minutes uh, based on the various phases uh, could you elaborate a little more on those please yeah so good question once again so uh, I, I did uh, sound it very quick and fast when I spoke about two and a half hours for the initial deployment so these times um, are are tested in our lab environment where uh, you know the engineers built the software that create a, a environment. Uh, obviously, they, they they would have uh, an optimal environment, you know, in terms of complexities. But yes, different customers have different environments and the different scales. So, depending on the complexities. Uh, and the scale. If you have about 3,000 watt servers, probably, you know, uh, then uh, this may take a couple of hours more. But if you, I, I believe you were about close to 500 to 1,000, all these timelines that I've shown you still would hold. 
great Manish, thanks for this as well. Uh, I think we have a good number of questions flowing in. The next one is, uh, you referred to uh, the reduced TCO uh, delivered with the solution. Um, and you also referred to uh, some some uh, uh, integrated database which comes as, or bundled database which comes along with the solution. Yeah. Uh, could you please highlight on that? Yeah, yeah, good, good question, uh, Naveen. Uh, yes, I did mention about uh, having a packaged database instance uh, coming up with this solution. Uh, again, uh, what we had in our mind was to 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 uh, to be to introduce a solution which is lighter on the pocket, right? So we have to go, uh, do away with the Oracle necessity that we had. So we introduced this uh, open source. Uh, database instance which is Pros, uh, Prospect SQL, uh, which is bundled within the software uh, that that you can you know obviously when you download or you when you buy that it comes bundled with the same. So yes, it's it's it's, it's actually uh, uh, a database included and and then lighter on the bottom. No cost to you. Okay, um, I hope that is also answered appropriately. Uh, there are a few, uh, you know, technical questions here. I'm, I'm sure you would want to answer those. Uh, the question says, uh, can it be installed on a desktop PC having Windows 7, 32, or 64-bit? Can it perform application? Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm moving to the next question. So the question is, can it be installed on a desktop PC having Windows 7, 32-bit, or 64-bit? No. No, it, it it cannot be installed on. Uh, uh, let me say, uh, ideally, it should not be installed on a PC. But if you if you want to use a laptop and then have that server environment built on that laptop, yes, you can do that. So I'll give you an example. We had a typical situation in Singapore where the uh, one of the customer defense uh, defense they they just wanted a, a mobile equipment to be used to, to manage their servers. So we, we kind of uh, had a very heavy configuration of the of the mobile PC and which we installed obviously the server configuration and then ran the, uh, the, the, the Sava instance out there for managing. Uh, so, so let me add a bit, uh, you know, this is my experience Manish and probably it will help uh, you know, uh, get the answer um, to the person who has posted this. So, uh, on a laptop, probably uh, what you could do is uh, uh, build up the VMware workstation environment and uh, since server automation virtual appliance comes in virtual appliance mode, uh, you could import that VMDK or the OVA, OVA file uh, and and uh, uh, bring up the server automation virtual appliance as well on your PC on your laptop. However, it is recommended that you uh, use the VMware ESXi, which would also be available, you know, for free download uh, in a trial mode uh, to be implemented on a physical server. And and uh, you know, with that, uh, you could be well up and running. Let me move to the next one. Uh, it says, can it perform application compliance and batch management besides uh, server provisioning? So, yeah. So, 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 so the answer is positive, yes. Uh, apart from the, uh, you know, the, the basic provisioning, we can also run the compliance for you. And, uh, Yeah, we can we, we, we can certainly do that. So if if I summarizingly answered your question, yes, you can do that because we help you to install it, we help you to maintain it as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the last question are, is important, uh, Naveen, if you can please cover that as well. Uh, yeah, the question says, can it also manage desktop PCs, laptops, and PDAs? No. So I I I I. I I categorically wanted to mention this because please do not, uh, you know, consider this solution for PC environment. This is specifically meant for servers only. 
servers could be Microsoft based, servers could be Linux based, right? That's it. No PCs, no PDA, no laptops. Right. For the benefit of uh, uh, the person who has posted this question, let me also add that um, HP software solutions are defined with the IT categories in mind. If we have, uh, you know, the server environment uh, to be managed, the solution is server automation. If you have the client environment, which are the desktops or the uh, desktop PCs, laptops, PDAs, etc., the solution is called client automation. And similarly, the uh, the respective other IT domains like the application or the uh, the network and the storage, there are respective automation tools available. And uh, if uh, I, I would rather post it that if this is of an interest area, we could as well cover uh, that solution automation fees as part of the next web, Vivid webinar. So uh, appreciate that interest. Keep those inputs flowing in, you know, for that so that we can make the new sessions uh, meaningful. For you. I hope that answers, and uh, uh, we are kind of coming to a close on this session. We appreciate you fill in uh, uh, the survey form, which would be posted to you at the end of this uh, webinar, and. Uh, Best of all, you get a chance to, uh, you know, win a fifty-dollar Amazon gift card. I appreciate your time, uh, your valuable time this morning, and I hope you can take back the learnings and think through innovative ways uh, to, to, uh, you know, to put, uh, to use this in in the environment you manage uh, on a day daily basis. Thank you so much. Uh, one additional thing to note, uh, just to remind that the trial version of the solution is available online, uh, the link of which is published on the screen at this moment. Uh, if you may want to download, uh, please visit this URL hp.com slash go slash server automation. Uh, you would be able to download a copy for yourself. Um, once again, thanks. Thanks a lot for your time and trust. Um, uh, we'll have more updates coming out to uh, uh, to you, the members of Vivid, uh, uh, very soon. Thanks, so, everyone.